Hi everyone, it's coming a little late, but I still want to talk about what I plan on reading in March. My March reading has gotten off to a slow start, so I'm also hoping that making this video will get me really excited about these books, and then I will feel more motivation to actually get to them. Because uh, yeah, I just haven't been super motivated, my mood has been a little bit low, I think it's just like, I don't love March, and this winter has been so weird, it's just been so consistently like, rainy and not quite cold, that I feel like I never got a winter, and I have no idea where I am in space and time, and it's very disorienting, and I'm just ready for spring. Um, but March is typically one of my least favorite months of the year, so hopefully I'll find something to get excited about with books. Um, okay, so for this video, I'm only going to talk about uh, books that I physically have and then my arcs that I would like to prioritize this month. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about audiobooks, and I'm not going to talk about my shelf actualization reads because... Those are for a vlog. So I'll start off by saying that I have started a reread of Vita Nostra, and that is because Assassin of Reality, the sequel to this book, is coming out this month, and I have an arc, and I really want to get to it. Um, I should have reread Vita Nostra in February, but I didn't. Um, so I'm gonna hopefully read both this and the sequel this month. If you don't know, Vita Nostra kind of blew up on booktube, I wanna say in like 2018, 2019, which is around the time that I read it. And I was thinking back on, should I even bother rereading this? And I, I am, but it is extremely vivid in my mind, the major plot beats, and more importantly and distinctly, I think, how this book made me feel as I was reading it. So I almost didn't feel the need to reread it, but I decided to do it anyway, and I'm very glad that I am, because hopefully I'll, even, I'll enjoy it even more than I did the first time around. Um, so if you missed that original hype, Vina Nostra is a very strange novel. I think it dips a little bit into dark academia, but not in the ways that you would expect. This focuses on a teenage girl named Sasha, and she is on vacation with her mother at the seaside when she starts getting followed around by this kind of creepy guy wearing sunglasses. And eventually this man approaches her and gives her a strange task, which is to, at 4 a.m. every day of her vacation, to, to get up and go swimming naked and to tap the buoy that's visible on the on the horizon and then swim back. And if she doesn't do this, bad things will happen, basically. Um, so she does this, and then, you know, the first time she does it, she gets back to shore, and she immediately throws up these coins, and this keeps happening, but she feels the need to do it every day. And then the man gives her a different task, and eventually she goes to this strange institute of special technologies, um, and it kind of goes from there, where you're not really sure what they're learning, and they're not really sure what they're learning, and you're going through this sort of confusing and arduous process of being in the character's mind set where they're doing things and they don't exactly know why but it's 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 very mysterious it's mind-bending it is confusing and frustrating but only I think by design and so I'm very excited to see what the sequel does I haven't even read the description because I, I don't want to know but what I do know is I, I've talked to Matthew about this a few years ago and the authors actually wrote a completely original sequel for the English translation because I guess the original sequel was very not connected, like only very loosely connected to this first story. And I think that perhaps they, um, the American publisher decided that it'd be better if there was a more connected sequel. I could be misremembering details, but I believe that this is a more unique sequel specifically for the translation. Um, so I, I'm excited to see what happens next with Sasha, and I'm excited to revisit this story because it was one of the most unique reading experiences I've ever had. I gave it a four star originally, but I feel like it has five star potential. So I'm really excited about this and I'm enjoying it so far. I'm about 50 pages in. I have a couple of books from the library. I wanted to read Silver Sparrow in February. I just didn't make time for it. So I'd really like to get to it before I have to give it back, but it's Tayari Jones's debut. I guess I don't actually know if that's true, but it's one of Tayari Jones's novels. Um, I read and kind of liked An American Marriage, but I feel like I didn't appreciate it as much as maybe I should have. And I know people really enjoy Silver Sparrow, so I'm excited to give this one a try. I believe it is about a man who has two families. One is like his public family and one is his private family. And he has two daughters who are half siblings. And one knows about the existence of the other and befriends her half sister while that half sister does not know that they are related. That is my understanding of what this is about. But again, I, I don't know for sure, but I am 
eagerly anticipating getting to that this month. And then I also have begun Lot by Brian Washington, which is a collection of short stories. I really want to read some Brian Washington since now he has his third book coming out this year. And rather than jumping on the hype train for that new release, I should read his backlist, I decided. So I'm reading Lot, which is a very well acclaimed collection of short stories that I'm really enjoying. They're largely about living in Texas and being African-American and Latino and queer. And so that is kind of mixed into all of the stories. And so they're largely character and relationship based realist short stories that I'm very much enjoying so far. And then speaking of short stories, since I'm kind of on a roll with them right now, I figured I'd sneak in another collection of my TBR. And I really like to read Seeking Fortune Elsewhere because I know Mercedes and Rincey last year really enjoy this collection and I picked it up and I would like it to not sit on my shelf forever. Um, I don't know much about this other than that they liked it, but that's good enough for me. A physical arc that I didn't get to in February, but I would really like to is A Spell of Good Things by Aobami Adebayo, which I actually never read, uh, Stay With Me, but I figured I'd give this one a try and if I enjoy it, I'll go back to Stay With Me. I don't know what this is about and I don't want to. I have heard things um, that it's not as twisty necessarily as Stay With Me was. I think that that was one of the big things people talked about with Stay With Me is how unexpected the plot was in its twists and turns. And I think this is more straightforward narrative wise. And I think it takes a long time for the two stories to kind of come together, but it's very worthwhile payoff as I've heard. Um, and then finally, in terms of physical books I would like to get to this month, I would like to read How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu, which I've selected for my March book club. If you'd like to join me, my husband and I film discussion videos after book club, after like our physical book club meets. We do a debrief, deep dive discussion of our experience with the book. Um, and we film that and put that on my Patreon. And I try to remember to do like little update posts and like check-ins, but that's kind of the main thing is that my husband and I have been filming these videos together and it's really fun. Um, so we're going to do that for how high we go in the dark later in March. If you'd like to join in on this, my understanding of this book is that it is, uh, a novel comprised of short stories that focus on the aftermath of a global pandemic, which happens because of climate change. So as the ice caps begin to melt, it unleashes, unleashes this like prehistoric virus that, ravages the globe and the nature of this virus is that it changes your cells behavior so i've heard you know kidney cells begin to function like brain cells and because different parts of your body are trying to act like different parts of your body um it your you know body begins to shut down because your organs no longer know how to do their primary functions Sounds terrifying. Um, I've also heard it's devastating, so we'll see how it goes, but I would really love to love this. And then let's dive into my little arc list, which I'm very excited about. I don't think I'll be able to get to all of these, but I'll do my best. So as I mentioned first, Assassin of Reality, sequel to Vita Nostra. Uh, I'd also really like to get to Flux by Jin Wu Chong, which just seems very intriguing. So it says here that it is a brazenly original and stylish debut about a young man whose reality unravels when he suspects his mysterious employers have inadvertently discovered time travel. So I think we're following like different timelines and probably how they are impacted by this time travel situation. It is a haunting and sometimes shocking exploration of the cyclical nature of grief, of moving past trauma, and of the pervasive nature of whiteness within the development of Asian identity in America. So um, Wang Ma blurbed it. I think that it's a little bit maybe like Severance meets Sea of Tranquility. I don't know if that's true, but that's what it's making me think of in this moment. So I'm excited about that. Um, I also would like to read Chlorine by Jade Song, which is, it says it's in the vein of the Pisces, which I did not like, and the Vegetarian, which I loved. So I'm excited to see where it falls on that imposed spectrum. But I think it's supposed to be horror about a woman who is turning into a mermaid. Um, she's an avid swimmer, and I think that, yeah, her legs start doing weird stuff. Um, excited to dive into that. Uh, let's see. I have a couple of nonfiction books here. First is More Than a Glitch, which I thought sounded intriguing, so that's why I requested it. It's Confronting Race, Gender, and the Ability Bias in Tech. I think this will be particularly relevant, especially with the rise of things like chat GPT and other artificial intelligences and how our biases are 
coded into algorithms. Algorithms are not objective. Let's see, mortgage approval algorithms that encourage discriminatory lending, dangerous feedback loops that arise when medical diagnostic algorithms are trained on insufficiently diverse data. Um, so yeah, I just think that it just might be interesting. It might be a little bit over my head and maybe dry and technical, but I thought I would give it a try. Um, and then I also have Saving Time by Jenny O'Dell, which I believe comes out tomorrow, so I won't be reading it in advance. Uh, but I know people really enjoyed How to Do Nothing, which was her first book. Um, and I think that this is just like examining and questioning time and how we have structured our time and our days. Uh, I have heard a critique that this is maybe interesting, but not practical because we can't just like get rid of clocks. That's not a, 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 a likely thing to happen. So it might be more of a thought experiment than anything else, but I still think it might be valuable to consider and evaluate like how we structure time and how probably the answer is capitalism, um, but still might be worth exploring. And then also I have Above Ground by Clint Smith, which is his new upcoming poetry collection. I have not read any of Clint Smith's poetry, but I have read How the Word is Passed, which was a really excellent nonfiction work that was one of my favorites of last year and I'm excited to read his poems so I requested that and I will probably wrap it into my poetry exploration vlog that I'm doing over on my patreon for April for poetry month so uh yeah like I said it's too many things because also you have to bear in mind I will probably be listening to at least one audiobook and then I also have two books for my shelf actualization project which I know what they are and luckily they are short. So I, I will definitely be prioritizing those over some of these if I find myself running short on time, which I likely will because I have not read very much this month so far. But uh, let me know your thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned. If you have read them and wanna get me hyped on them or discourage me from reading anything, both are entirely welcome. I'd love to chat with you down in the comments. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.